So we recently got our first look at the massive overhauls coming to Season 4 of Diablo 4, and in my last video where I did an overview of all of these different systems, I also mentioned that I wanted to do specific videos going into every one of these big changes, every one of these new systems being added in, to give a much more in-depth look at all of the changes coming. So in this video, I want to go over what I think is one of the most important changes coming, which is the massive overhaul to the Codex of Power. And at the end of this video, I also want to go over why this big of an overhaul to the Codex of Power is probably going to lead into more systems being added into Diablo 4 that specifically ties into the Codex of Power and into the Legendary Aspect system. So this overhaul to the Codex of Power is not only going to be a massive quality of life addition, but it's also going to change your progression throughout every single season, and more specifically, it's going to significantly change your progression going through the world tiers. Now I think the main portion of this overhaul that's going to make a lot of people super excited is that now there are going to be no legendary aspect shards. So instead of having your inventory filled with shards and half of your stash tabs just filled with different randomly rolled shards, you're now going to have all of that space freed up and all of your legendary aspects are going to be in the Codex of Power. So when you take an aspect off of an item, it goes directly into the Codex of Power, and how they've gone about adding all of the powers only into the Codex of Power not only is a massive quality of life change because you don't have to be carrying shards and have your stash filled with shards, but it's also going to do things like allow you to switch builds much more easily. Because this new version of the Codex of Power will now have every single legendary aspect in it, and when you go salvage a legendary item that will have a legendary aspect on it, it will then upgrade that legendary power in your codex to however strong that legendary power on the piece of gear was. And you'll also have this shown in the UI of the new codex. So let's say you have a legendary power that can roll 1 to 100%. And let's say that legendary power has 15 ranks in the codex of power. So once you get one rank of that power in the codex, let's say you got the lowest roll you can possibly get, it would have have one out of 15 shown in the codex. And since you now have that power in the codex with whatever role you have, you can infinitely use that legendary aspect at the power you have in the codex. So one of 15. You can infinitely put that on as many items as you want. You're never losing it. You'll have it for the entirety of the season. But then let's say you get that same legendary aspect on a piece of gear. It now has a better role. So you salvage that item. It gets put into the codex. Now you have five out of 15. So the roll on it is better. You will always have 5 out of 15 now with infinite uses. And then let's say you're in the end game, you finally get a perfectly rolled version of that legendary aspect on a piece of gear, you salvage it. Now you have 15 out of 15 on that legendary power in the codex. Now you will permanently have that for the rest of the season. You can put that max rolled aspect on as many pieces of gear as you want. And this is going to be one of the most significant changes to the quality of life. Not only do you not have to store a bunch of the same legendary aspects with different roll amounts if you want to switch up builds or you get new items now you don't even have to care about getting that legendary aspect on any piece of gear because you always have it perfectly rolled freely able to put it on any new gear you get and the codex of power is also going to and the codex of power is also going to be shared between all characters on that specific realm so if you're on the season and you get say a generic power max rolled if you create any new alts you can just instantly put that max roll on a new alt piece of gear, which will also help leveling quite a bit. And since the Codex of Power is saving all of the legendary aspects with different numerical rankings, such as 1 out of 11 or 15 out of 16 or 1 out of 6, the developers have decided that a lot of the legendary aspects are going to be stronger at the high end than they used to be. Because if you say have a legendary aspect that just has a roll range out of some random amount of damage, say up to like 3200 damage or something, if you split that into say 11 different ranks, it's either going to be lower or higher for the majority of legendary aspects. So they just made most of the aspects a bit stronger to fit into these new rankings. But this doesn't mean you're going to be getting extra power on all of your aspects while obtaining them in the same way, because you're also going to be obtaining these legendary aspects in a bit of a different way. 
So previous to season four, you could start off a new season and you could get super lucky and get a max rolled legendary aspect while you're like level 10. But once we get into season four, you'll actually have to be in world tier four to get the max rolled versions of legendary aspects. And it seems that how they're doing this is as you go up in the world tiers, the possible roles you can get for legendary aspects go up. So say if you're in world tier three, you may be able to get 75% of a max roll. You'll have to be in world tier four in the high difficulty in the game to be able to get max rolled legendary aspects meaning they're technically gonna be a bit more rare but because there's also gonna be quicker leveling you're gonna get there quicker so it's probably gonna feel pretty similar to get the max rolled aspect but you're obviously only gonna need to get one max roll of a legendary aspect and then you have infinite uses in the codex and you'll probably have also realized that i've been talking about salvaging legendary items to get their aspects because there's no longer extracting aspects off of items. Instead, anytime there's an aspect you want, you salvage the item. It'll give you the resources for the item and it'll put that new better role directly into the codex. Then you have infinite uses. Now, one area I could see this being a little bit of an issue is let's say you get like a max rolled legendary aspect, but the item you just got is super well rolled. There could technically be an issue with that to maybe it's one of the rarer aspects that you haven't found yet, but you don't want to salvage this item because it's really well rolled and i would say if you're in world tier 4 you got a super well rolled item probably like a 925 item it's probably just going to be better to not salvage the item because i think getting max roll legendary aspects are going to be easier than getting super well rolled items but that is one potential small issue i could see arising because you have to salvage items to save the aspect in your codex so that's pretty much all the information you need to know for the overhaul to the Codex of Power. And I think this is easily one of the biggest and most important changes coming with season four. But I think this overhaul is going to make way for a lot of new systems being added into the game because this change is also going to come with a new UI for all of your aspects. That's also going to include your tempering recipes. Tempering is also a new crafting system coming into the game. But this also tells me that this new UI that has all the aspects in it, has all the tempering tempering recipes in it that also has all of the quality of life features, including filtering, keyword searching, and just a search option, I think is also going to be used for some new systems being added into the game. And there's some very interesting possibilities because this also ties into what I think is one of the biggest hindrances in gearing in Diablo 4 that is also not being changed in season four. And that's so we just don't have enough gear slots in Diablo 4 for how many different legendary aspects there are and all also mixing in unique items because some builds right now in Diablo 4 pretty much require you to have almost every slot with a legendary item in it so you can have all of the legendary aspects you need for a build because a bunch of legendary aspects make builds actually work. So you may need all but like one or two slots for your legendary aspects then you can put like one or two uniques into the build and this becomes an issue because they're constantly adding in new unique items and new legendary aspects that could potentially have a bunch of interesting opportunities for builds but you need a bunch of these legendary aspects to make this type of build work and then you have say one or two legendaries that are also required for the build to actually work so you basically can't use any of these new uniques or any of these new aspects but if you added in a new system that would allow you to have some additional legendary aspects without needing to be on gear and just giving you the power of those legendary aspects you could open up a ridiculous amount of new build possibilities and there's a system similar to this in Diablo 3 called Kanai's Cube. Now if you've never heard of this the Kanai's Cube in Diablo 3 essentially allows you to put up to three legendary powers in this cube that'll give you the power of that legendary item just as its own power. So instead of needing to have that legendary equip you can just put that power in the cube and you will also get that power. So essentially what this does is either allows you to add in three new legendary powers to your build or it just allows you to take off three legendary powers from those gear slots and put in new items in those gear slots which opens up a lot of new build potential and even though this was pretty good at that in Diablo 3 I think it would actually be much better in Diablo 4 because in Diablo 4 so much of our power so much of our different effects are tied into the legendary aspect system and I do also think that because the legendary aspects are so transformative and augment so many different things that that's one of the reasons why the talent trees in Diablo 4 aren't 
bigger and more complex than they are because the legendary aspect system gives you so many different opportunities to augment abilities. There's so much power in our aspects, but this comes at the big downside of what I've mentioned that you are very limited on your slots of legendary aspects and then mixing in unique items. So to bring this back around, a system like Kanai's Cube being added into Diablo 4 would be perfect to just add into the new Codex of Power UI. Because again, we have this new UI, only has aspects and tempering recipes in it. They could just add in the Kanai's Cube or something similar, add in another tab in this UI. You go over to that other tab, it can have all of the legendary powers because it's in the same UI. And then you just go in and select one of those legendary powers. You put it into the cube. Maybe it has some cost associated with it. And then boom, you could have three new open slots on your gear to either put in another legendary aspect that could potentially massively change up your build, or you could use some more unique items because we're getting so many new unique items. In fact, we're getting double the unique items in season four. And there's so many pretty interesting ones that you could just open up a ridiculous amount of new build possibilities just by this one new system that would generally be pretty easy to implement and isn't a super complex system. So it's not going to add a ton of unneeded complexity, but it's going to add a lot of potential depth to the different builds you can create. So this Codex of Power Overhaul is not only incredibly good for a quality of life feature, incredibly good for trying out new builds, incredibly good for changing up how you chase these legendary aspects, but I think it's also going to be pretty instrumental in having some new features come into Diablo 4. But that's pretty much all I want to go over, so thanks for watching.